Die de CIA, de Secret Service, de commandobunker van burgemeester Giuliani en de SEC, de beurswaakhond die toeziet op de financiële schandalen van Wall Street. Volgens de complotdenkers was het bewijs van de Amerikaanse medeplichtigheid te vinden in gebouw nummer 7. En is daarom van tevoren besloten dat het zou worden opgeblazen. Als we niet blijven zoeken naar antwoorden, zullen we ook nooit de waarheid vinden. Well, welcome back again. Now, now that that refreshes your memory, that's shocking enough. But that type of news has already been out for over a year, maybe a couple of years. I forgot when that, you know, little 13-minute clip came out. But now, uh, and as you know, Jesse Ventura had his conspiracy theory show, and I don't know why Fox News gets the idea. Well, I guess we can figure it out, but why they have to try to discredit any 9-11 information that they find. And this reporter for Fox News, you can find this article at foxnews.com, by the way. It's called Shame on Jesse Ventura. And uh, it's amazing. We have uh, Larry Silverstein with that quote about, you know, he talked to the fire commander and, they thought was such a loss of life and the fires being uncontrollable, maybe the best thing to do was be to pull the building. And that's been a controversial thing ever since he said it. But no way to verify one way or another, you know, whether it was just a slip or, or, or a bunch of us wanting it to be that for further evidence. So I'm going to go ahead and show the text for this article. And I'll give an attempt at reading it, but we'll get down to the bottom of the page where the important words are. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and take me out there. The, the former Minnesota governor has discredited himself and dishonored and defamed the country by promoting the mistaken view that our government was involved in the September 11th attacks. Jesse Ventura should be ashamed of himself and embarrassed. The former Minnesota governor recently lent his political credentials to the discredited 9-11 truther movement by alleging that the September 11 attacks were either planned or permitted by the United States government. This recent admission was only a small part of Ventura's new book, American Conspiracies, Lies, Lies, and More Lies the Government Tells Us, which echoes a revisionist account of American history that holds the Bush administration responsible for the September 11th attacks by implying that the Bush administration either knew about the attacks, did nothing to stop them, or actually participated in them. Well, you know. <laughs> anyway, during a March 10 interview with Barbara Walters on The View, Ventura implied the Bush-Cheney administration used 9-11 as a pretense to start the Iraq war under false pretenses. Ventura apparently developed this theory after former Kennedy Johnson advisor Robert McNamara visited him at Harvard and allegedly admitted to him that the Gulf Tonkin incident, which escalated the Vietnam War, never happened. Of course, that's been declassified now. We know that's true. Perhaps what Ventura is missing is that there is probably more incontrovertible evidence and more witnesses who have already established what happened on September 11th than most major historical events. To dispute the conventional historical account is intellectually dishonest and nonsensical. But you notice he still hasn't given any evidence yet. But here we go. I know this because I was working as a journalist for Gannett News at Ground Zero that day, and I remember very clearly what I saw and heard. Although I arrived at Ground Zero shortly after the Twin Towers fell, I was in the danger zone created by Building 7 from the moment it collapsed in the afternoon, an event that is one of the key cornerstones of the 9-11 conspiracy theory. Governor Ventura and many 9-11 truthers allege that government explosives caused the afternoon 
collapse of Building 7. This is false. I know this because I remember watching all 47 stories of the building suddenly and silently crumble before my eyes. There they are using that silent thing again. If it didn't make noise, there couldn't have been explosives. I refer you to the firefighters for 9-11 Truth quoting their documents that talk about explosives not having to make noise. But anyway, onward. Here we go. This is, this is the, the damning article, the damning uh, paragraph. In an effort to prove that Jesse Ventura is off his rocker, he brings up some other evidence that's a convoluted way of showing it. But here, let's read on. Shortly before the building collapsed, several New York Police Department officers and Con Edison workers told me that Larry Silverstein, the property owner of One World Financial Center, was on the phone with his insurance carrier to see if they would authorize the controlled demolition of the building since its foundation was already unstable and expected to fall. Do you, did you get that? He's on the phone with his insurance company asking them for permission to demolish Building 7. He says a controlled demolition would have minimized the damage caused by the building's imminent collapse and potentially save lives. Many law enforcement personnel, firefighters, and other journalists were aware of this possible option. There was no secret. There was no conspiracy. While I was talking with a fellow reporter and several New York Police Department officers, Building 7 suddenly collapsed and hit the ground. Not a single sound emanated from the tower area. There were no explosives. I would have heard them. In fact, I remember that in those few seconds as the building sank to the ground that I was stunned by how quiet it was. The myth that Building 7 was blown up by the U.S. government is false, and so is the broader theory that our government was somehow involved in the 9-11 attacks. I know this because I was one of the few reporters who investigated the 9-11 conspiracy theories and urban legends on location in the immediate aftermath of the tragedy. Um, well, I'll keep going anyway. Uh, in October 2001, I reported on a story for G Gannett Newspaper, the Journal News, that FBI Joint Terrorist Task Force was investigating a Brooklyn high school student for predicting the collapse of the World Trade Center five days before it happened. To my surprise, the New York, uh, New York City Board of Education confirmed the story on the record, and the FBI confirmed there had been rumors circulating in the New York City Arab American community about a possible attack on Manhattan. Well, yeah, they're trying to justify it. In other words, they, what, the patsies might have <laughs> spread some word. Maybe that's what, what's going on. My story was immediately confirmed by Newsweek senior editor Jonathan Alter, and after I penned a fellow up in the Washington Times Magazine, Insight, I was interviewed by Fox News' Bill O'Reilly on The O'Reilly Factor. My investigation into 9-11 conspiracy theories and urgent le urban legends led me to interview both American and Israeli intelligence officers as well as representatives of the Afghan Northern Alliance, FBI, NYPD, and sources within the Muslim community of New York City. Although I found trace evidence that vague rumors circulated within the community that somehow something was going to happen in lower Manhattan on September 11th, I found no evidence of any conspiracy other than the one hatched by Al-Qaeda that was later confirmed by the 9-11 Commission. Since Al-Qaeda once operated out of the Al-Qaifa, Al I think that's how to pronounce it, refugee center on Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn, and had many low-level operative, low operatives working in the New York City area, it did not surprise me that rumors of their plan had leaked within the Arab community of New York City. Many similar rumors and reports occur frequently, however, and so I have never faulted the Arab community or our government for not acting upon them. In no instance did I once talked to one source who even hinted the American government had any foreknowledge or involvement in the September 11th attacks. As an investigative reporter who survived the collapse of Building 7 and doggedly investigated the 9-11 conspiracy theories in the wake of the attack, I am convinced the 9-11 truther movement is nothing more than a paranoid, delusional pack of lies. I was there. I know what happened. And there is no single credible piece of evidence that implies the United States of America in the in the September 11 attacks that implicated, sorry, I can't even read now. Anyway, Governor Ventura has discredited himself and dishonored and defamed his country by promoting these intellectually dishonest views. He should be ashamed of himself. Well, that's long-winded and basically, so what? Go ahead and bring me back, folks.